Good evening, everybody. Um, before I uh, dive into my presentation, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Prashant Kusumba, and uh, rest of my teammates. I'm Madhu. Bev. Prakash. Vinod. So these are my team um, members. Before I, um, you know, start my presentation, um, let me share a transportation fact, which I, uh, which I was like found when I was browsing for, you know, uh, for my presentation. Uh, it says like, uh, if all Americans who take transit to work and uh, they use their cars I instead, then their cars would uh, circle the Earth in a line of traffic, which is 23,000 miles. Isn't it great? <laughs> Coming to the today's agenda. Um, the introduction uh, uh, for the intelli intelligent transportation system, which is our topic, uh, is dealt with me, I'm, and uh, then improving safety will, uh, will be dealt by uh, Bell, and uh, the vehicular ad hoc networks uh, is deal with uh, Prakash category, and the transit info using wireless technology go, uh, will be taken by uh, Vinod Neelam, and uh, the last one, traffic controlling using new neural networks will be taken by Madhukes Reddy. So, um, the intelligent transportation systems, abbreviated as ITS, well, the name itself says it, it deals with uh, uh, transportation systems, uh, I mean like uh, intelligent transportation systems. Next slide. slide. Okay, the first question which comes to our mind is wha what are intelligent transportation systems? Well, the definition says like the application of high technology and computer power to current freeway, traffic, and transit systems to increase the safety and efficiency of surface transportation system is what comes under this um, ITS. Before I uh, before I explain something uh, about the topic, let me give a live example. This was happened uh, in the Thanksgiving break when uh, one of our friends were driving to Chicago. We were in the city, uh, the Chicago, and uh, we were planning to go to the Woodfield Mall. And unfortunately, one of our friend, uh, he was like driving. Uh, he was driving for an hour and he and found himself lost in the city. So, in the, in such cases, you know. Uh, we can use a global positioning system which is available in the wa market, you know, and that would be handy. So, coming back to our topic, uh, what, what makes interest uh, for the research or scientists uh, to, move mo uh, to do more research on ITS? Well, the answer to that question is, it's due to the problems caused by traffic congestion, and um, this traffic congestion is, increase, is increasing worldwide and uh, due to the uh, motorization, urbanization, and you know, the uh, population growth, and, uh, and, and one of the big is uh, the changes in the population density, which we see a lot nowadays. Um, and these congestions lead to a decrease in efficiency of transportation and uh, infrastructure and uh, which increases the uh, traveling time and air pollution mainly and the fuel consumption, the natural resources for, you know. For example, if you take United States, uh, in, 90, uh, in the starting of 1920s, United States saw, uh, you know, a large increase in mo uh, the motorization and urbanization that led to the migration of people from uh, sparsely populated rural areas and uh, densely packed urban areas into suburbs. So why is uh, ITS so important for us? Because ITS offers a great opportunity in improving the safety, uh, the convenience, and uh, productivity of our personal and commercial travels. And it also plays a vital role in uh, the land and funding for new road decreases, you know, and all stuff like that. The main objective of uh, ITS is to provide a communication standard that ensures the interoperability and uh, interchangeability of tra traffic control and its devices. You know, like using ITS, we can communicate uh, the intervehicular communication is possible. And um, like, let me go uh, a bit of technical. Like, for these uh, intelligent transportation systems, uh, the project deals with like uh, installation of uh, 
the internet gateways, you know, uh, through which the vehicles, you know, the, the car drivers, the persons who are driving, they can access to the internet and, you know, uh, and uh, access to the weather forecasting and the uh, latest news and like that and uh, the traffic flow and uh, uh, everything like that. And uh, uh, coming to the last one, what we are doing differently. This is what uh, the operate, uh, using these uh, inter, uh, intelligent transportation systems, the operating uh, the existing programs more effectively is possible and you know, we can make it like the, the transportation system and others may be, m can be made more easier through you know, integrating some intelligent systems like uh, one of my friends said about, about the artificial intelligence. It's, kinda, uh, it's something similar to that. An intelligent transportation system, it deals with the traffic and transit management, the traffic signal systems, and global positioning systems, which I gave an example about that, and um, the weather in, uh, the in and people can access to the weather info, uh, information on their, you know, while driving and the real time traveling information. And let me say some, a few, uh, advan uh, advantages, I say, benefits of ITS are like, you know, it's like time saving, well, time saving in the sense like you know, uh, if you're if you're trying if you're planning to go somewhere else, you know, like there are always many routes you can take to drive for, to reach your destination. If if the traffic is more on a particular exit, you can take another one, you know, and uh, and we can also reduce the crashes and uh, fatalities. Like uh, we can uh, uh, you know prevent those uh, major accidents, fatal accidents, you know, and um, and most thing is we can save energy and environmental benefits. We have a lot of en environmental benefits on that. Uh, the next part will be continued by Bev. Okay, um, whoa, where do we go? Technology's great when it works. <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> let me back up here. I'm going to discuss briefly the methods for relieving traffic congestion, improving safety, and enhancing productivity. And with the increasing population and the desire to own a car, traffic has gotten heavier and heavier over the years. The problem with uh, the increased traffic is you know, a lot of times they will build new roads to accommodate for that, and the cost has become problematic. So they had to find another solution to the problem. And in 1991, Congress uh, established the information, our intelligent transportation system, and um, funded it and set parameters, uh, general parameters for them to establish the technology to help ease the traffic congestion. In 1996, the uh, director of the transportation Department of Transportation set, decided to s that this would save time, lives, and improve the quality of life. And so he set a goal for the Department of Transportation to have at least 75 uh, metropolitan areas um, experiencing the benefits of intelligent transportation systems. Now the movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now let me go back to my PowerPoint. Um, in Charleston, you don't experience those type of uh, congestion uh, situations, but in the sit larger cities, that's common. So uh, I wanted to share with you a movie to uh, set the tone. ITS technologies were um, that they 
chose to use to help manage congestion were set up that they would monitor traffic conditions, mo uh, metering traffic onto freeways, optimizing the timing of s traffic signals, and implementing electronic money transactions on toll roads, and faster and anticipatory uh, responses to traffic incidents, and then providing travelers with information on travel conditions as well as alternative routes and modes. These will go pretty fast. The first one was a call box, which um, is placed along the rural roads in the areas where there's uh, cellular telephone use is not available, or there are really, believe it or not, people who don't have cell phones yet. So those are placed throughout along the roadside so that if you have emergencies you can stop and call for assistance. Next one. Closed circuit television um, is located above the roadways to watch for traffic accidents or um, different situations that, that need to be addressed. Those cameras can tilt, pan, they have full control over them and each one of them has a, it's a lightning rod on the pole with them so if the lightning strikes that it protects those. The next one is a ramp meter and it's designed to maximize the flow of the traffic on the ramps to go get onto the freeways or off. And there are stoplights and um, so there'd be two lanes and the, the lights would control the traffic but it keeps things moving along. Those are used where the um, volume of, of, of traffic are higher. Then the next one is the passive acoustic device or pad and those are uh, small devices that set on the top of the utility bowls and uh, they detect movement and speed and density and then that information is sent to their, uh, to the offices where they can then set up different situations, scenarios to control those traffic, like the control the, the uh, uh, traffic lights or they can send out emergency vehicles, whatever they need to do. The next one is called uh, their loops and those are embedded in the roadways and I don't know if you can see them from behind but they're, the cars pass over them and that reads and collects data on the speed and the number of cars that are going through and then in some offices they have colored maps that, that the uh, operator reads and then makes the necessary adjustment to take care of the traffic. All of those uh, prior to are all sent, the information is all sent to a control cabinet. Those are along the roads and then those are sent on in, the information then or data is sent on into offices so that, that the controllers can take care of that. Those are weatherproof um, and built to withstand whatever elements they're outside in. Once that information is sent in, then they can do, go ahead to the next one, then they can do, um, they can send emergency vehicles out or they can send uh, messages to the dynamic message signs where it would say ramp uh, accident on ramp or exit 196, uh, take the next exit or uh, slow moving traffic or uh, I think I've seen one that says approximate arrival time or, you know, it, it, ca it calculates the uh, speed of the traffic so it alerts you as to what is going on ahead of you and you can make um, adjustments to your travel pattern. Next. The um, Department of Transportation then wanted to determine what the outcomes or how the emerging, emerging outcomes were uh, happening through this uh, new technology based uh, system. And um, in the year, uh, in the fall of 1996 to the, so the fall of 1997, they collected this data uh, based on the fact that, that reducing ac the number of crashes would directly impact everything else that happens uh, in movement of traffic. And this is the, so that the percentage of reduction, um, it increased considerably in the measure, this is in the uh, amount of time that it took you to get from point A to point B and um, so it, it significantly increased throughout the time. The next one. Then the other was the operating cost and productivity and um, the first one is the electronic toll collection 
and where the you do oh, I'm old enough that I knew when I came to a toll booth, I had to count out the change and hand it to a person, and then it evolved to you drove by and threw the money into the into the slot. Now then you can go right through, and it will. Um, my sister has a, pa a toll pass, and she's, she lives in Texas, and she drives through. They don't slow up a bit; they just keep moving, and um, the cameras read or the computer reads that and then charges that to her account number. Um, in, the, in northern Illinois, there you ha it breaks off into four or five lanes, so that if you want to be billed or you have the pass, you can take the left lanes and accelerate. You don't have to slow up. If you want to pay, you slow down and sit in lines and risk accidents um, as you go on. The next one, um, which is not much of an increase, but it's the uh, automatic vehicle locator and then the computer aided dispatching and that's uh, more involved with the um, emergency vehicle situations and then the fleet management they saw some increase in reduction the overall impact of the um, intelligent transportation systems have uh, greatly impacted the consumers and the um, infrastructures or the cities. It costs, a, uh, and I'll back up to my nose because I missed a couple of things here. Um, to, um, to In 2005, there was a loss of $2 billion, hours, $100 billion in traffic delays, and $70 billion in traffic accidents, and approximately 2 billion gallon of fuel wasted annually. Um, to, to build additional roadways to help alleviate the traffic uh, congestion and to reduce waste and fuel and the uh, release of toxic fumes and things into our, our air, it would run about a $1 million per lane mile to build additional highways. Through the uh, uh, intelligent transportation systems, it would cost only $50,000 per lane mile. And by doing the informational or the intelligent transportation system, it increases the capacity of the roads up to 20%. So it actually puts off having to do the major expenditures to control traffic. And? Who right. yeah. Hi, Al. I'm here to present like one of the new technology introduced in like intelligent transport system, that is vehicular ad hoc networks. And one of the motivation to ve vehicular and networks are like millions of people over the world are dying due to the accidents. And many of the governments are using the techniques to reduce the accident like safety precautions in between the roads, uh, like uh, traffic jam signals and like there is a ramp on the right and so that. And when you're coming to the like, what are the HADAC networks? It's just like a like local area network that we use to send the information like we used like in the internet. But when coming to the special characteristics of HADAC networks, like it is used for a like small area networks so that uh, like, s like small kind of networks can use like you need to send the data between the like few few users. If it is like 10, 10 or 15 users in the network, we can use ad hoc networks. And it is also called BA net. And, and the FCC, like Federal Communication Corporation, is allocated some <coughs> a definite frequency to the like vehicular ad hoc networks. It's kind of like 75 megahertz. It is also called as distributed short range communications. Next. Here is an uh, overview of how we we net look like. It's kind of like highway traffic road. There are some vehicles in the like. If you have any emergency unit, even like if you two two cars crash, they can provide uh, information to the next car so that they cannot collide with each other. 
so that they can prevent the accident. And there is not only like uh, communication between the e each vehicle, there is a communication between the road based unit and the car in between the highway so that the radar can send information to other cars not in these highways so, so they can avoid the traffic jam. So there is an example of how uh, like vehicular attack look like next. And when coming to the vehicular attack networks, we use the sensor technology to, to transit the data between the vehicles and data between the roadside transmitter to the vehicles. We got like inter-vehicular communication and roadside vehicle communication, like inter-vehicle communication that we see in the past diagram. So you can provide trans transmit the data between the vehicles in between the road and you can send the data to the roadside based base station. Next. Uh, well, coming to the applications of VNet, uh, as our friends told that like we can plan when we're going to a trip, like everyone do like when you're going to a trip, access the browse, access for a web page, like how much time you're going to take and what are the routes we need to take. But if you install a like Red Hat networks in your car, these are like the modern applications of future car that we going to be here like in 2012 or 2010. Uh, well, coming to the ad hoc networks, one more application is the safety that you see like is avoid the collision between the vehicles. And the next part will be continued by our friend Madhu. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm here to present a presentation on how wireless technologies can be uh, used to track a vehicle. Uh, this is called as uh, transit information tracking. And before that, uh, uh, before that, I would like to know about a report. This report is brought by technology man management firm, and it says that in a, it says about the web users. According to the report, uh, in the year October 2007. There are 1.2 billion email users, but uh, they predicted that by the year 2011, it would be uh, 1.6 billion email users. And the report also says that in the year 2006, there are on an average 183 billion emails are sent each day. Uh, that is a really huge amount. And email systems are designed so that they are not only used from the computers, and they can be used from without any wireless devices like mobile phones and any other wireless devices. And for that, we need WAP. WAP stands for Wireless Application Protocol. And uh, without WAP, we cannot, we cannot use our internet from the mobile phones or any other wireless devices other than computers. <coughs> then uh, how can we track a vehicle using wireless technology? A person can track a vehicle of his interest, like buses or trains, using wireless technology, so that he can keep on time, and he can travel his tours well in advance, and he can be updated by the latest informations, and the estimated time and RML so dependencies can be derived through the internet or wireless devices, and and I will explain how a passenger can track a vehicle, whether the vehicle can be a bus or a train. Uh, I'll draw a small fl flow chart for you. Uh, this might be the person who is interested to track a vehicle. He sends a request. He sends a request uh, from his mobile phone. Uh, to the gateway computer. And this gateway computer might be using WAP services if the request is sent from the mobile phones, or else it uses just the HTML markup language. And from here, uh, it goes to the web server. The request goes to the web server. The request goes to the web server, where the request is finally uh, read, and the response is created. The response is created at the web server, and from and this response 
is then sent to the gateway computer again, and from here, it reaches the user. It might be on his mo mobile phone or on the computer, whatever the device he is using. Uh, in this way, a person can track a vehicle of his interest. And uh, in the small cities like Charleston, we don't have any bus facilities, so we might be not using this technology. But in the larger cities like Chicago or New Jersey, people depend upon this technology uh, rather than uh, because they depend on public transportation rather than on their own cars. Uh, and that's it. And the next application will be explained by Vino. Yeah, <coughs> I'm, uh, yeah, this is a technology of uh, artificial neural art, uh, artificial intelligence actually, and this was explained uh, by one of my friend, and uh, uh, I'm going to apply this to the uh, intelligent transportation systems, and I'm going to discuss how uh, the traffic signals can be controlled using a neural network. And here, uh, first of all, I'd like to discuss how the operation of modern traffic signal works and that is uh, uh, they work by uh, the usual uh, software programs uh, which are written using the algorithms and uh, uh, actually and those algorithms are written in such a way that the uh, the signals will the signals will be operated periodically and uh, the uh, I mean to say the uh, the the time interval between the uh, between the uh, change between the uh, between the ch signal change change is is same uh, sometimes you uh, a person might uh, sometimes a, a person might need to uh, have have the signal for for a longer time uh, in the cases in the cases where uh, the traffic flow is more or uh, there is a traffic congestion so so here uh, we use the neural networks uh, to control uh, to control those signals so that this uh, the transmission the the transition of signal takes place according to the uh, traffic flow or uh, uh, the traffic congestion so here uh, ac actually uh, a neural network is similar to the bi biological uh, neural network which we have in our brains uh, of course uh, the number of neurons may vary. Uh, uh, in our brains, we have around a billion number of neurons, and, uh, comp and but here uh, we use around uh, uh, 10,000 to 50,000 neurons. So, uh, uh, actually, we so before implementing the uh, neural network, uh, we first train the uh, train the neural network accordingly for example if we want to use uh, if we want to use the technology uh, in face recognition uh, we train the we train the neural network with uh, uh, training sets uh, which are made up of training samples uh, these training sets have a uh, input and, uh, and and an output so the output uh, which we get from the neural neural network is compared to the uh, output of the training set so that uh, and the error is uh, uh, and the error is de determined and uh, accordingly uh, accordingly the uh, er uh, the the error can be reduced by uh, adding the weights uh, the uh, this adding the synaptic weights uh, uh, which uh, actually uh, which is between the uh, a synaptic weight actually is uh, the when when two neurons an, a neuron will be interconnected with with these uh, with several other neurons so uh, the point the point at which the neuron interconnects with other neurons is called a synaptic point and uh, there there a neuron can be excited or inhibited so so the uh, so that synaptic weight is adjusted accordingly so that the output can be uh, reduced uh, error can be reduced sorry so so like this uh, if uh, if we consider this neural network uh, neural network 
in the traffic si traffic signal model uh, v input v input for the neural uh, the inputs for the neural network can be uh, the present state of the signal uh, that is green light or red light accordingly uh, uh, it should respond uh, the next stage it should it should give the output of the next stage uh, the time the transition so uh, uh, here, here is uh, this is the back uh, back propagation training algorithm as explained by my friend. Uh, is uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it's a training algorithm actually, and the conclusion will be given by Prashant. Thanks, Vinod. Um, so, friends, uh, you have you have seen all the technology technical things of uh, ITS and. Uh, how it's useful for our daily life and uh, how to make our travels and you know our trips very safer and so easier so i i think uh, and actually we all think that its is very useful technology and it must be more researched and in future uh, there must be many uh, applications of uh, its mm -hmm. in the traffic systems and you know uh, make our trips and our every uh, every road traveling safer and and here that's the conclusion what i can say and if you have any queries on that you're welcome any thank you